everyone. So what if you are in Costa Rica and you've grown up in Costa Rica and you're a, an awesome doctor, but then you decide, well, hey, you know what? Traveling is fun and so is writing. Writing's fun. And where am I going to be in all this, um, this, this adventure called life? Today I've got a beautiful guest, Dr. Mariana Calleja, and she has a beautiful story and we're going to break so many fears, but not only that, it's just something you want to sit back, relax, and listen, and just take soak up all the lessons along the way, <laughs> which I'm sure there'll be a lot. So, hello, Dr. Mariana. Hi. Hi. How are you nice today? Nice to be here. Thank you. All good. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good, 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 fresh from Scotland, <laughs> in Scotland, and oh, yes, all been a nice, interesting journey, like you said. Yes, tell us a bit about um, Dr. Mariana, how you started this journey, like what made you decide you wanted to be a doctor in the first place and was, was it something that you had to break fear around because I mean you're a woman, right? Mm. Well, let's see, um, I think it was around when I was in high school, I always wanted to be an architect since I was a child, I always said, you know, like because there are, there are all these this constructs I guess is if we can call them that of what you want to be when you grow up when yes. you're a child, right so you think this or that and for some reason I really don't know why I always say I want to be an architect and I was always playing with Legos and drawing you know these these maps of houses and things and it was always like that and then in high school I think I was around maybe 14 15 years old 15 I, I switched and I thought mm, medicine medicine I don't know why I don't have a memory. I, I cannot recall why I did the switch because there was nothing happening, you know, like to, to prompt me to such a different, you know, shift there. But that's that's when it happened. So when it was the time to get into uni, I just went went in, I applied, I applied to one university. I didn't uh, I, I didn't got the the how to say the, like the minimum grade of that university in my country then i applied to another one so I, you know the usual thing you apply to many ones yes yes, and yes. So i got into one and i i went through the career and yeah and then it was difficult <laughs> i think speaking of fears i think through medical career i had to break through so many many fears but the interesting thing that i see now by now I'm 42, so and I've been practicing for 18 years now. And what I see now that I couldn't see then is is all how unaware you are of all the things that you're breaking through, actually. Yes. At least in yes. my experience, in my case, because med school was very, very difficult, very intense, very rewarding in many ways. But at the beginning, it's just all, all this load of information and, and, and tiredness and exams and things. But then you get to meet friends and new people and then you get to go into hospitals the first time. And it's, you know, it's this mix of excitement and also like, oh, my God, I'm not good enough. So, Ooh. you know, the good enough thing has always been there one way or another. So that probably that could be one of the greatest fears I have been breaking through in the yes, different stages, yes. you know, and, uh, and then I just finished my career and it was, you know, there was a burnt out period after that, that took me a long while to recover from maybe, mm -hmm. but, but even, even though all those, those things, I, I love what I do. I love how it has found out, you know, with all the decisions on the, along the way, it's been being interesting, I could say. I yeah. <laughs> I, I, I love that, and, and and also sorry to interrupt. Um, yeah, yeah. also the the growth you must have been through. Like, okay, probably the fear to like, okay, am I good enough to get into this university? Oh, I've got in. Okay, now, ah, am I good enough to pass this exam? I've passed it. Am I good enough to be in the hospital? I've passed it. So you've you've obviously come through so much growth just on that on its own, right, to, Just to, to, to navigate uh, med school, because, I mean, we all know what med school is like. It, you've actually had the courage to do it, so mm. I commend you to, for that as well. Mm, thank you. Yeah, I've, I've wondered, because I 
all I know is medical school. I, I haven't done any other studies in, in, in that academic sense, right? So, but I'm always, I've always wondered, I'm, I'm sure it's not just the case for, for med school. I know there's other careers that are super difficult too, or even journeys. It doesn't have to be an academic career, you know, like these that I have felt in my in my experience through med school, I'm, I'm sure, and I'm curious, but also I'm sure that so many people go through all of that, breaking those, you know, those different fears just in different ways, right? Because I, 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 yes. I'm proud of being a doctor, but I don't want to take pride in the sense that it's the only thing that will break through your fears, you know? <laughs> Not at all, because we all have so many different ways to, to go through our own selves, right? Yes, yes. Now, I'm glad you brought that up because I'd like, how did you find yourself? Because obviously, when you're younger, you're going to, you went into university. We're just using that because, but everyone has their own yeah, lives and they have a the journey, but we're using that. Um, you went in with, with a certain knowing or whatever you did. I'd like to see, take it a step further and say, how did you find yourself within your, your medical journey? Um, when from the beginning to to when you started practicing, um, how did I find myself? Find yourself like your with you work within yourself, your own, you know, your own inner person. Mm -hmm, did you? Mm -hmm. How did that grow? And how did you come to get to know her? I think this is interesting because I've been pondering a lot about this lately, and. I think I'm realizing now that I am probably getting to know myself, my real self, like inside without all the layers now in the last months or in the last year. So I don't know if I really knew myself back then. I was doing life and I knew what I liked and I, you know, like in the, at that time, go doing things with, with friends or the music I, I like to listen or or the hobbies I, I enjoyed at the time. But I don't think I really knew myself. That's what I think now. I yes, don't think yes. I really knew myself back then in a way that wasn't, you know, it, it was just going through with the mm, crowd mm, somehow. Mm, mm, you know mm. what I mean? Yes. So I, 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 I don't think I, I have an answer for, for that <laughs> time. <laughs> okay, so then I'm going to ask you this. What's changed then? Like, I mean, a lot has changed in the outside world, okay? What's changed within Mariana, but from that person to this person now? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I think that the reason that uh, made me or this, I think it's the experiences that have allowed me to change is me deciding uh, mm, first that I needed to, to have you know, like a different look at myself. I think that I've had that in different points of my life. Uh, say, for example, there was a time I went through divorce. That was a really eye-opening experience for me. So that was like, as I always call it, like my first awakening, so to speak. That was probably the first time in that process that I realized, oh, what am I doing? <laughs> what, what, what is this? I'm feeling something different than what I have feeling for the last 30 years. So that was probably the first time and it impacted everything, everything that I am, you know, not just mm -hmm. my relationships or not just my career, but at the time it was like that eye opener. And then after a few years, again, another experience about that, it was um, about creating a, 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 an online business or a little like, yeah, like a medical consultation uh, empire that I had in my mind at the time. But this was like eight years ago, no COVID pandemic, no no online consultations were even in, you know, and people would call me, you're crazy, you're crazy. What are you thinking about a doctor doing online consultations? And I was like, I gotta try, I gotta try. And, <laughs> I love it. You have that vision, right? Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> and that experience also changed me into thinking, oh, that really brought to the surface, all more of the, I'm not good enough, I'm a failure, I'm all these things, even even financially, that that really that period of time touched so, so many things that changed me a little bit more and more. And since then, I've been through therapy different times because I really believe in therapy to help me, you know, process things, understand things. 
And in the last um, few years, uh, I have had, I don't know, the inner calling maybe to go and look a little bit more into the past, into my childhood, into my bringing up. And that has also allowed me to see even more. And, and I think probably the biggest change has come through all of this. So it's like a sum of all these moments in time that made me have to look inside and into the past, you know, in a way that would allow me to just understand. Yes, yes. So it's, maybe it's a long process. Obviously, it's a lifetime process. It never ends. But yes, that's. That's maybe how I see it and, uh, uh, in the present that has allowed me to change because it's not back then. <laughs> no. It didn't happen back then. It was auto, <laughs> auto mode back then. Um, yes, yeah, so that's exciting. So now while you were doing all this inner work, what was happening outside in your life? Because we, we spoke a bit offline about how you've been traveling. So how did you decide to leave Costa Rica, where you come from, right, and, and your career, yeah. well, and your, your home, and, and start traveling? What, um, what happened? What did, you, what, decided, what did you decide? And how did you decide uh -huh. that? And why? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I I had always had this feeling that I wanted to go to Barcelona, always. My grandma on my dad's side, she was born in Barcelona, so I had this curiosity. You know, she never really talked a lot about her 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 life uh, with her parents. I, we know things, but it wasn't not something. Uh, it wasn't something so so present for me to you know to get the idea. Oh, Barcelona. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So, but even even then, I knew there was that. So I was very curious, you know, about how they traveled from there to here in the first place, because that was my great grandparents, like in the early nineties, you know. <laughs> so that was one thing, and the second thing that made me really curious to to want to go it was that my parents themselves they had lived in France uh, many years ago when when well I hadn't I'm been born, but it was always there, like oh France, oh they lived in France and they were always prompting us to, to go study uh, outside in other countries or go do other things and go see the world in, in a way that they were able to do so. So there mm -hmm. was these two things that always made me feel like, oh my God, there's stuff out there in the world. I really <laughs> want to go and see the world. There's so much more stuff than this than this that I'm seeing here. So I was terribly, terribly thirsty for that. So I thought, okay, I'm going to make, I'm going to make that my life and mm -hmm. I did eventually I did it really pushed me I I mean pushed me forward because I, I always said that travel has been like my fuel my my yeah my engine and it has taken me places and places inside and outside so it's I I would say that's that's why I, I decided to go abroad to go traveling to go live abroad it's been the best I always tell people go go if you have a tiny curiosity try to find a way and make it happen because it changes you uh yes i'm sure it does because you like you in different cultures you you're learning different languages um so it's, it must be a, a big growing growing um experience how how much fear did you have to um and, and it doesn't sound like there was much how much fear did you have to to get over to actually leave your home because a lot of times you think about things and it's great but when the time comes that you have to jump and take that leap of faith yeah it is it is a huge leap of faith I think the fears were most about uh leaving my family first because I was like oh I'm gonna go even though that uh, when I was that age when you're younger you don't think of that that much you just want to go Right, yeah. but then the other fears were probably around money. How will I make it? How will I sustain myself? Uh, more of the practical things, mm -hmm. I, I would mm -hmm. say. So it's something that I, you eventually, I eventually mm, broke through those things as I was making the decisions of okay, I have to go. I have to buy a flight. Okay, it's done. I have to apply <laughs> to a master's degree. Okay, I got in. So it was one step at a time, uh, and all in all, this excitement was always pushing more than the fear. So the fear was there, but the excitement was there. So it was like they were all together. So one thing somehow pushed the other forward or, or canceled <laughs> the other. 
but I would say those those mostly about the financial, the how I will sustain myself, how will I, I be okay. I wasn't afraid of being in a new place, in a new country, in a new continent. I, that wasn't really a fear, it was an excitement. I think the mm. financial was my mm. biggest fear. <laughs> <laughs> it always seems to be the one that's like always underlying most of the stuff. Ah, yeah. <laughs> So, so then you went to um, you went to Barcelona, and you started practicing there, right? Yes, I did because I because I had always wanted to go to Barcelona. When I finished my degree, I did all the paperwork, even though I didn't know if I was ever gonna go. I did all the paperwork to have my degree validated from Costa Rica to Spain because in in med school you have to do that every time if you want to practice in a country. In each new country, you have to do the same uh, paperwork validation process for our degree. So that's a little bit exhausting, but I did it. I was convinced. So after I graduated, I did the process. I had to wait, uh, I think, around eight months. This was back in 2007. And and then I got the, the letter on the post mail saying, okay, all good, you're good to go. And I was like, oh, okay. But then, you know, that was it. I just had the green light, but I didn't have a plan. I didn't have a desire to go right away. I think it was three years later when I decided to go, when I decided to leave. So that made, made it easy. So when I arrived in Barcelona, I thought to myself, okay, I'm going to enjoy my first two months without just you know doing nothing because I can because I want that and then I started applying for for jobs with all my paperwork you know in place and then after I think a month I found a job and I started working I was scared to death I was so scared <laughs> I was so scared because even though it was the same language it was not the same you know it was not the same <laughs> it's all these different words like you would find between american english or or british english or south african english i'm sure all these differences right there's these words and phrases so that was a fear and the accent because in spain they can be sometimes a little bit uh, uh biased about people from south america even though costa rica is considered central america uh, yes, yes. from Mexico down it's all South America and, and Spanish people they have this like a little bit of um, racism maybe it's a strong word but sometimes it could be like that mm -hmm. or, or just a little bit of a rejection towards people from South America so there was always this even on a professional um, setup but then you just go one day after another and one day and then the next day and the next day and you start learning things so I got my first job, and and that was 2010. Everything. Wow, that's beautiful. But, I mean, at that point, you must have been having to deal so much with that fear of rejection, the fear of yeah. the fear of judgment, the, and the biggest one, the fear of, oh, am I going to be good enough? Am I going to be able to make it here? Yeah. So how did you deal with those those things? I mean, I mean, you were in the, the situation, you had to, but how did you actually deal with them at night, you know, when you're all alone and it's like, you have all these things because, you know, you, you're mm -hmm. there. Well, I think, I think it's the people, the people around you that, that help you, that sustain you, that help you, you know, that they, they motivate you or in your low days, they are there for you in the high days, in the happy days, they're also there like cheering for you. I think that was what helped me the most, mm. you know, mm. because I had my people, uh, my family in Costa Rica, you know, just happy for you and, and you're sharing them things and pictures of this place and the experience <laughs> and oh, this happened to me today or or today was shit and I feel like crap or today was great. Uh, so expressing all of that and ha knowing that you have people to go to where you can just, you know, feel supported. Uh, is what probably made the whole difference. And at the time, I, I had a partner as well, so we were together in that in that process, mm -hmm. and that also made a huge, huge difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The so commu yeah, community has a big difference um, in, in yes. support and in, in carrying it forward. Yes, and and you realize you find good people everywhere because <laughs> yeah. in that first workplace, I remember there was a nurse. Uh, that she she was so kind and so sweet to me and she was like okay 
if you need anything, ask me. Like, she understood my situation. She was from Spain, but she was very, very empathetic. She was very understanding of what I was going through. And she was very happy and calm about it. And so she gave me the confidence to go ask to go say, hey, explain this to me. I, I know this medication. I would normally, you know, in, do this and this and that, but uh, what are the terms here for this and this other thing? Because even even though medical terms are, you know, very, very technical worldwide and anywhere, they're pretty much the same, but medication names change and certain things change in, in each different setup. So she was really nice you know you know really kind to to give me that confidence so i would ask her why would you call this in here and she said okay this go get this book go read into this and go find that and i would do that and and that was amazing because it was not just my family and the people who knew me it was also strangers who mm -hmm. didn't know me at all and yet they were super kind super open so that hope of finding, knowing that you will find good people everywhere, that's just, like, that makes me feel even more in love with the world. It makes me want to go explore even more, you know. Yes, 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 mm. I agree with you. Um, you find kind and beautiful people wherever you are. Everywhere. So I love that. But now I have to ask you this question, because, of course, you're in the medical, um, you're in the medical profession, right? You're in this, in this hospital. Um. What happened when COVID hit? And I know it's like a very like, so, but uh, but uh, from from a, a medical professional's opinion, what happened when it hit? How did it make you feel? How afraid were you? How did you navigate all the craziness um, within the actual being inside the first responder inside the main hub of it? Yeah. Oh, okay, that, that was rough. And all in all, I feel lucky because I was, I was at the time at a smaller clinic. It was not a, a big uh, hospital or a big ER, anything. We, we were a smaller clinic which did more preventative work. And that, despite the whole fear and the anxiety <laughs> of everything, made it made it better because we were like, Okay, we're not like in the, the, you don't feel like you're in the mouth of the lion, right? In, yes, yes. So that as a first, you know, uh, encounter that was like, okay, we're here, what next? But it was interesting because uh, from the place where we saw it, we were in Spain, in Barcelona. So everything, you know, the news came from, from China. They went to Italy. In Italy, there was this first, like, sprouting of the virus and so yeah. it, it seemed so distant like oh it's Italy it's, it's there <laughs> it's, not, <laughs> it's not close to us it's nothing will happen but then it's like there was a bridge of virus from Italy to Spain <laughs> and it just came through and it was so fast it was like a train hitting us very very badly and you you kept looking at the news and it was yeah it was all very very weird surreal which i'm sure everybody will relate but for 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 me it was like that like oh oh it's there is there oh it's getting closer oh oh shit it's here boom and it just what do we not do now so at work it became everything yeah everything closed down in mm -hmm. in spain everything closed down on, on march 14th actually i I will remember perfectly because March 13 was my birthday and I was celebrating when those things were still there but people were still out on the street so I remember I had a friend visiting and she's also a doctor and and she we were talk, we were walking and we went for a drink everything was kind of quiet but it felt kind of weird so we went back home and and that was it and then the 14th everything closed and then on, that was a Saturday. And then on Monday, I thought, well, what, what do we do? Do mm. we go to work? What, what happens? Do we show up? Do we not show up? So all these, you know, communications from work, okay, you have to show up. We don't know what's happening, but, you know, just you have to come. So we were there. Everybody was suddenly home and we weren't. So... Mm. That was that was very scary, the whole scene. And, you know, that was the first week and the second week and the third week. At some point, there weren't masks for us because 
there was this sudden emergency and, and no one no one knew what to do no one yeah. knew what to do at the time not the the health uh, institutions no one knew the whole country every country it was just a, a mess that we were all finding out how to navigate one day at a time you know mm -hmm. right when we were there so it was very 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 scary because we were all doubtful i was away from my family and i thought oh my god what if i die so there was that too what what if uh, i'm alone here what do i do I, alone in the sense of, of family like close close relatives mm -hmm. parents mm -hmm. brothers sisters mm -hmm. ah so yeah We, we took turns every day during our break time, our coffee break, to cry, <laughs> basically, because it was, hmm, oh, it, I even get emotional just remembering it. We, we were just like, what do we do what now? Do do? Yeah, it was, it was very scary. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it must have been because I mean, for us outside, it was like what's going on, but for you, right inside, it must have been really scary. Mm. So, uh, but you survived it, right? And and just yeah. uh, you know, I don't want to go because it's obviously an emotional um, issue. But how much growth did you did that that bring about for you um, once you you went through it and you learned and you thought, oh, it's the end, and we survived. I'm here. Yeah. We survived. <laughs> Yeah. Ah, so, so much growth. I, I think it's difficult to put it into words because it was bringing so many things up to the surface of, of, of your reality, but also your, your self, your whole life experience. Yeah. I, I I think I cannot put it into words. It was it was everything because it made you. I mean, the whole COVID thing made you think about every single aspect of your life, didn't mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. didn't it did. It did. Yeah. And, and and I mean, a lot a lot of people changed so much in just everything, like in our environment, but also a, a, a lot of us as people, we, we changed without knowing it. How did that affect you? How did it change? Did it change anything like in the decisions you made later in your life? Yeah, it did. It did because it really, mm, really made you or, or me or us realize uh, so many things, especially about the the... How, what's the word for it? For, fragility? For, fragility. Fragility of life. The fragility of life. Yeah. Seeing so many people around you going through this experience of, of, of loss and, and death, it, it, made, it touches you. It touches you very deeply. And, and it just makes you or it made me ponder what am I doing with my life? Do I like where I am at the moment? Do I enjoy what I'm doing? Do I enjoy the way that I'm doing it? So I think for me, it was a process of maybe a couple of years to start to realize or to not to start because it had already started with the COVID pandemic, right? In, in all this, this way, quick way that it was like a tornado, but it maybe took two years or, or even three in the whole process of realizing, okay, I want to change things. Mm. I want to change uh my circumstance which is into something that is more aligned to what i'm feeling now after all these you know these hard <laughs> movements that happened through all of it so mm -hmm. i don't think it was a short process for for anyone right but for me personally i think it, it was maybe three years and in in that whole covid uh, period i i went through covid myself twice the first time i i had to be three months out of of work on on leave because it i had i it didn't get any severe thankfully but i had you know like the whole uh, fatigue and and difficult to to breathe and and to exercise i've i've been i've always been dancing for for a while and i couldn't dance after that i couldn't walk up the stairs normally to my flat as i used to before having covid myself so you know it's all these little things that touch you in, in the timeline of your life and eventually 
then you think one day something ha somehow stops you, you know, to and you realize, okay, I need to think or, or more like rethink what am I doing and how am I doing it and, and why would I want to change something and if I do, towards what? Mm -hmm. So I think that happened to me in, two, in, in 20, 23 beginnings, maybe? No, 2022, it happened to me. So I would say, yeah, two years it took of realizing changes and how fear changed me. Yes, yes. <laughs> COVID but, fear. Yes. Um, and I think it, it affected all of us um, on some Absolutely. level or another. It was, Absolutely. It was amazing. But um, what I'm so, so what changed then? So you decided, okay, this is it. Um, I, I just want to ask you one other thing while I was thinking about, um, yeah, about yeah. COVID. How did you deal with your sense of I'm not good enough during those times? Because it yeah. must have been so chaotic. I'm sure you didn't even have time to think about think for one moment for yourself. But you know, at night when you're lying in bed, um, asleep, going to sleep, how did mm -hmm. you deal with those those feelings of not being good enough? Mm. Let's see. That's that's a difficult question, actually. <laughs> I think because I've had mm, feeling not good enough fears uh, related to to being a doctor many times, mostly because when I was when I had finished university, I decided not to to go into the full specialization process. Um, I I remained a general practitioner at the time. Then I did a master's degree, but usually, you know, it's in in medicine. Usually, you go into a specialization degree. That's that's what they teach you. That's the norm. That's what will make you be better and go further. So yes, that was yes, yes. that was like a big thing I, that I think I had to to learn how to process all through maybe my first ten years of of career. And there was not a specific moment. You just keep facing that every single time when you talk to colleagues, but mostly when you compare yourself. And, and yeah. that's the, the issue with not feeling good enough. So after all these years and, and you know, doing again therapy really helped me to realize that doing this comparison is, is obviously unhealthy because it makes you feel bad about yourself. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that really, taught me a lot so I think the whole COVID pandemic made me feel that a lot because I was thinking oh my god I am not a, a, a specialized doctor I could be I should be there I should be in the ER I should be in the ICU I should be there should 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 mm, but then mm. at some point while talking with colleagues and the community like you said before community at work we, we all realized we're here because this is where we're meant to be. This is where we chose to be. This is, this is okay. It's not, it's not, you know, we're not mm -hmm. in the, an ICU, but we're still working. We are still doing other, or other different kind of work also with patients, but you know, it's, so you undermine yourself so much sometimes and you self sabotage so much mm -hmm. that you don't realize it. It's like, it's the norm to do that. And then you go, oh my God, no, this is not it. This is not how I should be treating myself. So yeah. So that is, is, is one of, I guess, the, the biggest things I got from this all, mm. from facing those fears that, that were related to, to the COVID. And, and I forgot your original question at this point <laughs> now, but it's, it's, it's the whole self-sabotage self thing that makes me... Uh, you know, bring it up to the front and say, no, I, 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 I am worth, I, I am good enough I, of anything that I choose to, to think, to do and to believe. And that's what pushes me forward. Anyway, I can come back to your original question. <laughs> no, I love that. I love that. So um, now, so after that, you made this decision, right, that you were, you wanted to do something else or whatever it is. You, you came to a, a, an inner knowing of some sort. Uh, so now you are in Scotland. So what happened between um, your time in, in Barcelona and Scotland? What decisions did you make and why did you decide that? 
Okay. So there was this, this one program that I have been looking into for a long time. It, it's like, um, it's like, it's not a PhD, but it's some, uh, some kind of study that I had always been curious about. So, um, in 2022, around Christmas time, I decided that that year I wanted to apply to that program. And I thought, okay, I woke up December 26. I remember, and I was like, okay, this is the time. It has. It was a program that had been running for for five or six years at that point, and I was always, you know, following, following. But I never felt like I want to apply. But that year, I decided to, and. I, I did, I prepared the whole process and then by January I, I did the application and then I waited for a few months and in that, in that period of time, waiting period of time in, before, you know, not, uh, hearing back from them if I was accepted or, or not, that got me thinking, that got me thinking. Actually, that was 20, sorry, December 2021. 20, mm -hmm. So all through 2022, I started thinking, okay, if I applied to this thing that was important to me, which had everything to do with the project that I have been wanting to do uh, regarding health, health education and all of this, I thought to myself, okay, I, I want to do this um, near my family. I want to do this in my country. I want there to be the root where I plant the seed, you know, of everything that I am envisioning. So that is what took me to to decide, okay, I'm going to leave Barcelona. I'm missing family enough to want to go. And I want to plant this seed and it has to be there. So I made the decision. I made the plan. And in June of last year, I, I left. So it was, yeah, it was all of, of that process of time, Twenty. 22 and into 23 mm -hmm. yeah and that's so, how I left so I left to um, to Costa Rica but in the process um, I found my partner <laughs> which I'm happily here with uh, so I thought okay since I'm doing all this huge move and he's in Scotland so let's do a detour <laughs> I stay in Scotland we share time together because I'm already allowing myself this time to not work for a while, for a few months or a year. Um, and that's why I'm here. And it has been really important time not to do work in a way that I planned for it so I could sustain myself. And it's been important. It's been important. Yeah. Oh, and, and and so that's... precisely to, to work through all these fears, more like integration of all the inner and outer work that had happened through the last couple of years. Yes, yes. And now, um, because I know we're speaking a lot about the self-worth issues, right? It's mm -hmm. interesting how you've come to this point, and that's what I'm seeing. You've come to this point where it's like, oh, you know what? I'm, I am good enough to, to enjoy this. I am good enough to have this beautiful partner. I am good enough to be on sabbatical. So uh, um, yeah, that on its own is, is beautiful, right? Mm. With all the journeys, it's, it's finally come to this point. Yeah, now, we have to speak about the writing because the writing, I mean, is, is more relevant for me right here yeah. now. How, did you, how does the writing, like, influence um, all this? And is it something that you've loved since you were a child? Yes, yes. Actually, writing, I've always said, is the probably one, the one most constant <laughs> thing in my life. Always writing and eventually probably travel. Those two things have been the things that have been with me all the time, like <laughs> super inside, you know, like engine level kind of thing it, it, since I was a kid, yeah. So writing has always been my self-expression, I would say. I've been kind of uh, maybe introvert type. I've been shy in many ways, but also I'm like, happy calm extroverted if i'm if i feel around the right vibe the right energy yeah. which has been tricky so writing has always been my way to understand the world to understand myself to make sense of everything that i feel or that i think and that has happened since i was a child really 
since I started writing, obviously. And then after that, it was always, you know, like this, this need to just go, like if it was rage, if it was tears, if it was joy, or if it was, you know, sometimes I was writing all the time every day and sometimes I wasn't writing for months. And it was okay, but it, it's always been my go-to, my companion, my thing. So it's been very personal. Mm-hmm. And at the mm-hmm. same time, I've, after I've reached certain age, it, it became this thing that I also wanted to share. Because I know I'm feeling these things. I, 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 I'm learning these things. So I want to share. I want the people to see this that I'm seeing. You know, when I was starting traveling so much, it felt like I want to show people what I'm seeing because I don't know if they have seen it and it feels important and it feels like maybe they will want to do it too. And and that matters. That matters to me. So writing has been everything for me. Yes. And I can resonate with that because that's exactly how I've always felt. It's always been like the savior. It's always been the one constant that you know you can rely on. Right. Yeah, so, uh, um, I feel that it's 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 actually really beautiful. So then, how did you start? Like, I know um, you you started writing um, on Substack and whatever. How did you start your newsletter? What made you do that? What are your plans for the future with that? <laughs> so I started writing on Substack. Basically, I, I learned about Substack through my partner actually. He started writing on Substack maybe two years prior or three and he was like oh I found this platform because we have always shared that we have been friends for for many many years now and and we were always you know like sharing all these writing tips and writing things oh I found these oh look at this new thing look at that and and then I remember he he said oh look at this new platform I found this I was like okay and that was like three years ago I wasn't ready I think but it was like okay one thing at the time I was completely you know in in a completely different period of my life with with before COVID and during COVID I was completely you know going through everything that I was just sharing before right so I was not on writing mode so in the last three to four years, I was just journaling. Journaling has been the one thing for me. Journaling and just occasionally when I had the energy because I wasn't so much, you know, uh, other stuff with the work that I didn't have the energy to even pour myself out through journaling. So I was like, okay, this is cool, but I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to pass it now. And then when I took, I started my sabbatical and then I came here, I was like, okay, let's let's go and check this this thing again let's go and check Substack and I was just there just going through through newsletters and learning how how it felt because in so many years of writing since I was writing about health or about travel or all the things I've been through so many platforms and I've seen uh, you know all these this escalation of of, of writing online yes. of different things so it was just one more platform to me at first and then I was like okay I'm liking I'm liking the vibe I'm liking the people I'm liking I'm enjoying reading again it was really really nice to just sit down even though it was uh, on the phone or I don't you know there's people that they don't like reading digitally or on screens but I, I I like it I don't mind it I like the books but I also don't mind the screen and I was enjoying the reading and I was like, okay, this is nice. So it made me feel something. Mm-hmm. And that's how I thought, okay, let's give it a try. I've always had this idea of doing medical teaching and health teaching. So let's give it a go. And, and I started right there. I started, uh, it was last September when I started writing. And I had some so much content from, from before, from other years, from courses that I had created back then so I thought okay I will repurpose all of that I will recycle it I will bring it and put it here fresh you know and mm-hmm. that's how it started and so far um yeah I'm, I'm still there I'm enjoying it I like the interactions I like I like how it feels mostly <laughs> and how it makes me feel and how it feels when people read me so it's like okay those feelings of I want people to learn something from what I'm writing thinking and feeling through the words so that's what has made it made me stick (laughs) in there yeah 
I love that. Um, and, and that's such a, it's, it's beautiful because there's a lot of community there as well. I have to just go back um, because you, you, you mentioned, um, as you were talking, I just, you mentioned your partner. I have to go back and, and say, how did that come about? Because you were good friends for a long time and then suddenly you, you together here in Scotland. Yeah. What happened and what, how did you get over the possible fear and self-sabotage of destroying the relationship? Well, yeah, we have we have some history because we we were, we have been really good friends probably for ten years, but <laughs> we were a couple in the past for a while, and then uh, we we split up because not because we didn't care about each other, but because of life circumstance took us really apart. So we just allow it to happen at the time and it felt like okay well this is it mm -hmm. and and that was yeah that was like six years ago so that was it we had been at the time like together for three years or so and life just felt like you know like okay this is this is things are changing at the time there were many changes happening for me personally for him as well so life just felt like this and we accepted it we talked about it and we said okay fine let's yeah I, I wish you all the best mm -hmm. and and we yeah we at, at first we didn't talk as much for, uh, for for the first months or for the first year but we kept on being in touch after that because it really felt like it was like our best friend to each other so the first person I would want to go and share something was him and and the same uh, for from him to me you know and that kept happening that day. so I eventually accepted that he was my best friend and that was it mm -hmm. and we didn't see each other for four years all through since pandemic and all of this but we kept talking and talking and talking and we just saw each other's growth and evolution I guess and when I was going to leave Barcelona to Costa Rica I, I felt like like I yeah like I needed to 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 tell him to share with him that because it felt like I was gonna be away now, like we would be in very different places, very distant from each other. So it felt like I needed to say goodbye just mm. somehow to mm. to close that whatever thing I felt in my brain that needed closure, even though we we had already accepted that we would be friends no never in that period of time I felt like oh maybe we'll get together again sometime no mm. it never mm. felt like that for me or for him and that was it so so we we decided to meet uh in March last year just for for you know to see each other after four years and because I was about to to just move permanently permanently uh far far away and when we met we realized we still had feelings for each other like deep feelings like that and and i was like oh shit <laughs> this is a shock i was in for a shock we both were and it was like so what now what because i have my plan i am living in barcelona i'm going to my family uh, i left my job you know all the things so we we talked through it again because we had always had this rule we talk about everything Mm. doesn't matter what since day one difficult nice beautiful bad hard awful happy talk about everything so mm. we mm. thankfully that has been something that has always worked for us as partners as couple or as friends when we were just friends so so we sat there and we said okay we need to talk <laughs> we need to talk about this and we did so we said okay let's, let's it feels right it felt super right it felt like the most calmness, the most, you know, like a light cloud of, of certainty right there. And I thought, okay, this, this is it. This feels like this is a yes, this is a let's go. And so we, so we said, okay, let's try. Let's try. We flow with it and, and we plan around it as we go. And that's, that's where we are. So, so far it's been a few months and it, it feels really good. It feels like reloaded 2.0 <laughs> version of our relationship which was so 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 unexpected and yet i love it it happened 
It's so beautiful. And you, you hear it uh, many times when people come together and sometimes they just have to go apart because they've got to do their, their healing uh, apart. Yeah. And then when the time's right, you just come together and it works. Yeah. I love this. That is know. beautiful. You just don't know because I have, I really had no clue that that would ever be the case. I, yes. I was convinced it wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, or maybe I convinced myself it wouldn't. Yeah, I don't know. But then life, life said, mm, second chance. <laughs> second chances. I love second chances. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's it so is, cool. It is an interesting thing. So many people say, no, never go back to your ex. But in yeah, in this case, I was just uh, feeling. I've always been someone who who makes decisions based on how I feel and usually the most important ones I never ask I never talk about them I never I, I just keep it to myself until I'm fully ready you know it's like an, yes. something I do within I, I I don't know if that's the same for everybody or or not but yeah the most difficult or the most important decisions in my life have always been like okay I, I cocoon I am just within myself, I decide, I see the pros, the cons, the this and that, and then I just announce my decision. That has always been like that. And, and this was no different. And is, so I feel, and so when I feel and it feels right, then yes. that's where it has yes. to be. Yes, you just, it's just like a knowing, you know, you know, yeah. you know, and yes. that's where, and that's how you just follow. Yes, I know exactly yeah. how you feel because I'm the same kind of way. Yeah, um, but I, I, you just know them. Yes, you just know, right? But also, um, the, the, two, you, the two people that came together now aren't the same people that were together last time. I mean, because you've both grown and changed. You like two different people coming together, the same people, but you've grown and you've changed yeah. and you've evolved. And so it's that's noticeable. beautiful. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Ah, oh, such a beautiful story. And mm -hmm. um, thank you. So, uh, Mariana, have you found freedom now? I think I think I am in that process. I mostly because I have felt freedom out from outside or towards the outside I've had all the freedom you know I, I have been able to to live to go abroad to travel to do so many things so many things I have the freedom to do everything and anything mm -hmm. supported by my family loved by my family and that has been amazing but the freedom that I am finding now it's it's inside freedom all the things that mm -hmm. I am allowing myself to do to think to feel to change I, I think this is the biggest freedom that I, yeah, that I'm, that I have felt so far. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because of everything that I have lived or everything that I have gone through that ha that is making me realize this thing now, like more consciously, because I've probably been in this place where I have felt like, oh, freedom, you know, like I feel free all of me in, in many different ways, but I don't think it was ever as conscious as it is now so I, I I think to answer your question I think that I am finding it I don't feel like I'm fully free now from everything but it is it is the most liberated that I have felt as I feel right now like the mm. way I'm feeling right now is probably the 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 biggest liberation and it feels really good because I'm I I I, I almost kind of see it you know when you see that you want to get to this place and and you are seeing how all the things around you are somehow uh working towards it yes yes so it's like yes. i mean that process like you're walking through a through a pathway and you're seeing it you're, you you see it you you don't you don't you haven't got there yet but it, you're feeling it you're feeling yes. like oh okay I can take this off I can leave this I can oh okay I'm feeling lighter <laughs> and I can, can keep walking so it's, maybe that's it maybe it's being conscious about all these these things and, and saying I choose myself and it's okay <laughs> yes wow that's that's beautiful because I'm um, coming from that self-doubt again and I'll keep hopping on that but it's coming from that self-doubt and coming to a point now we're saying you know what I choose myself and it's and I'm okay yeah and I'm, and I'm free within myself knowing that um that this is exactly where I'm supposed to be what I'm supposed to be doing that's that's power 
Yeah, it is. And I think this this that you just said, like, in the present, that's what how I hear it. And that's how I translate it. If I take this that I am now, this place that I am at, if I accept all of this without all these worries from past or, or the future, then it changes a lot. It changes everything because then you're, like, at peace. And I think that's where freedom lies. Yes, yes, because yes, exactly, exactly. Because all we have right now is this time that we, we're spending right together, this present moment. Yeah. And, and it's true, if you actually live the moment but really taste it and live it and feel it and mm-hmm. be it, um, the past and the present don't matter and, you, and, yeah. and it, it is really freeing. It is. And it sounds super cliche because people are saying this all the time these days. It's like, oh, yeah, like every conversation uh, with so many people, sometimes the people make the joke. I don't know if you've seen it around or if you heard it, that everybody, every conversation these days sounds like, oh, yeah, live in peace and do and this <laughs> and that. But it's not even about that, right? It's like, it sounds cliche, but it is true. It is true if you really, really just really try to be okay with what was and not be so worried about the future because it's only natural to be worried. But if you try to leave those two things, not just so here, but a little bit there, you suddenly feel like, okay, I can breathe. I can see this. I can eat my ice cream and enjoy it. It's like, yeah, it's cliche, but it's real. It is, it is true. <laughs> yes. I love it. Wow. Um, thank you, um, Dr. Mariana. This has been such a beautiful conversation. But before oh, we go, um, t- what advice would you give someone about possible freedom? And of course, freedom is um, it, freedom is a real as a choice, and freedom is very personal to everyone. I mean, freedom means different things to different people. Yes. So it's a very broad term. And you have spoken about it right now about that. But what particular thing can someone do right now to feel that freedom right now uh, wow I would I would say yeah it's difficult but because as a right now it would be that thing that I just said like <laughs> see where you really are right now and just be grateful for it maybe gratitude is the thing that makes us fall into the present more quickly it's like because if you're complaining 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 then you are probably thinking of yourself as not enough or all the things that we were talking before so if we're constantly complaining we're not being in this moment we're seeing everything else and everyone else but we're not seeing ourselves i don't know i i always go to this point where it's about ourselves not in a selfish way but in a way that it's the thing that allows you to to actually enjoy because if you don't in, accept yourself then you don't enjoy the things that, that you really are and if you don't you, you don't find that then it's so difficult to to really enjoy everything that surrounds you i don't know if it <laughs> if i'm making a point of it makes any sense so i think it's just stand right here look around and see what you are grateful for right right now in this very second like <laughs> is it your family is it your health is it your work is it your your inner work is it your gym you know what is it that you're grateful in this very moment and from that point onwards maybe you can make it a practice and then you'll start seeing the good things because we are taught to to just see the the negative things or the bad things or or you know, it's it's difficult, it's tricky because as you said, everybody has a different experience. But I think gratitude maybe is the right now thing that helps us like click back into ourselves and then in the long run I would say work on yourself because mm. that's that's the thing that unlocks everything, I think. It really like therapy helps and it could be any any, you know, any kind of of help that you can get but if you just make a a little of a conscious effort to try and understand who you are why you think what you think why you react to certain things in the way that you have reacted what what things trigger you and why 
you know, trying to understand all of that, it really is a life changer. I yes. really think so. I agree with you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Mariana, where can people find you? What's your, I know we will have the details in the description box, but where can people find your newsletter and get all these words, these, these pieces of wisdom? <laughs> Thank you. So my subject is called The Feel Good Life. And that's where they can find me. And I'm also on Instagram, but I'm probably right now more active uh, through my writing. Because on Instagram, I, I share things. I'm not much on Facebook, really, these days. And yeah, I would say just those two. But basically, the Feel Good Life Instagram or Substack. That's Beautiful. It. And it's perfect as well. It's it's a it's perfect um, name as well for for your Substack and for this whole interaction. Thank you. Yeah, I think it used to be called differently. It was health made easy at first. Oh, oh. And, it was, and I was, you know, thinking I have to teach. I want to teach. I want to teach. But then at some point, again, the whole rethinking. I was like, this is not enough. It's not just about health. This is more about <laughs> life. I want to talk about so much more. So I changed the name to that, and it has felt really good to be on that name so far and there's still so much more that I haven't really even written or shared about like all this life wisdom stuff it will keep coming and coming now more than ever so yes <laughs> yes and this is such an exciting time to be alive because I know there's a lot of things happening um, in the world but it's just such a beautiful time to to find yourself and to and to grow within yourself and to just develop and it's you know community and yeah. um, grow you can give so relationships much. yeah i think it's vital i think it's vital and it's rewarding it's all that we get whenever we finish this journey that's what we take that's it i think yes yes <laughs> Oh, thank you thank so much. You. This thank was an you, amazing you. conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, it was. It was beautiful. Thank you. And who knows, maybe we'll meet again in six months to say, hey, where are you? What's happening? That, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Same for you. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mariana. Thank you, everyone, for being here. And um, we'll see you soon. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye.